Okay, I'm going to continue section uh, 6.1 here. We're talking about systems of linear equations. And uh, in the previous video, I had talked about the graphing method. Now, the graphing method is an option, but in some cases, it's, it's not really a great option. We looked at this example here, and, uh, you know, with the numbers being what they are, like this would be uh, really hard for somebody to see a point like this on a graph uh, where two lines would intersect, okay? Um, so there's uh, some other methods that we need to know that I, I feel are gonna be kind of more important um, techniques for solving a, uh, a system. Um, there's two other methods presented in this section. They're called the substitution method, and then uh, the elimination method is another one that we'll look at. Uh, now, I'll just show you a bunch of examples of, uh, of each one here. So with the substitution method, here's an example. Uh, I want to solve this system. Okay, now you want to begin by um, selecting an equation and solving for one of the variables. It does not matter which equation and it does not matter which variable. Just pick one and solve for either x or y. Okay, so in this one here I've selected the bottom equation and I'm going to solve that for y. Uh, if I add y to both sides and subtract 6 from both sides, then I'm looking at y equal 5x minus 6. Now, I'm going to substitute this expression here into the top equation where I see y. That way, everything is going to be in terms of x with the top equation. And that's going to put me back on familiar ground here now because now I don't have x and y floating around. I've got only x. Uh, so let's substitute 5x minus 6 into the top equation where we see y. And here's um, the equation that we now have, and I'm going to solve that for x. Distribute negative 2 into the two terms. Collect your like terms. And um, if you subtract 12 from both sides, you're looking at negative, 70, uh, negative 7x equal negative 7. If you divide both sides by negative 7, then x equal 1 is the solution to this equation here. Now knowing that x is 1 means that I can get y by substituting that number now into my my substitution equation. Uh, so if x is 1, 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So I think that x is 1 and y is negative 1. Uh, of course I'll want to check that. So if x is 1 and y is negative 1, is it true that 3 minus negative 2 is 5? Yeah, 3 plus 2 is 5, that's true. And is it also true that 5 minus negative 1 is 6? Yeah, 5 plus 1 is 6, that is also true. Okay, so x equal 1, y equal negative 1 would be correct. Now, by the way, um, I mentioned uh, at the beginning here, it doesn't matter what equation and what variable you want to solve for. Okay, um, so like I could have selected the top equation and solved for x. That would have been fine. I would have still got the same answers here uh, if everything was done correctly. It's just if I were to select the top equation and solve for x, I would have found y first, that's fine, but I would have introduced fractions early on in the calculation and it, that doesn't really sound like a fun thing to do to have fractions there right off the bat. Okay, So the point is to look for, look for a, a variable where you have either a 1 or a negative 1 in front. Ideally, you know, with the substitution method, you want to solve for that variable to start. Here's another uh, example, okay, uh, solve the system, okay, and we're going to use the substitution method. Now, I see that there's a 1 in front of x in the top equation, so let's solve the top equation for x. Uh, subtract 2y from both sides, and you got x equals 7 minus 2y. Now we're going to substitute that equation into the bottom equation there where we see x. That way everything is going to be in terms of y. Uh, so I've done that. And now I'm going to solve this for y. Distribute 4, collect your like terms. Okay, negative 11y equal negative 44. If you divide by a negative 11, uh, I'm getting y equal 4. So knowing that y is 4, if I then put that into my substitution equation, I can get x. Uh, 7 minus 8 is negative 1, so I think x is negative 1 and y is 4. Okay, now the nice thing about working with a uh, system is that you'll always know if you have the right answer. You can check 
once you've got your values determined. Okay, and every equation should be satisfied then. Uh, it's a good idea to check. You know, so like uh, if x is 1 and y is 4, is it true that negative 1 plus 8 is 7? Yes. And is it also true that negative 4 um, minus 12 is negative 16? Yes. Both of those are satisfied, so I, I know that this is the correct answer. Okay, here's another example. Uh, again, use the substitution method. Uh, so now I don't have a 1 in front of uh, x or y. That, that's okay. Um, I, I still want to you know, pick an equation and solve for the variable. So I selected the bottom equation and I solve for y in the bottom equation. Uh, if I add 2y and then add 2 to both sides and then divide by 2, I'm looking at y equal 5 halves x plus 1. And so now I'm going to substitute that into the top equation where I see y. That way everything will be in terms of x. Uh, so I've done that. And now I, now I have to uh, solve this equation here for x. Uh, if you distribute the 4, 4 times 5 halves x, uh, 20 over 2 is 10x, and then plus 4. Okay, 9x plus 10x is 19x. You're subtracting 4 from both sides. You're going to have 19 on the right. 19x equal 19 divided by 19. It looks like x is 1. If x is 1 and we substitute that back into the uh, equation here, uh, 5 halves plus 1 would be 7 halves. And so it looks like x is 1 and y is 7 halves should be the answer there. Okay, if I check in the top equation, I'm going to have 9 plus 4 times 7 had well, well 4 over 2 is 2 and then times 7 is 14 so is is it true that 9 plus 14 is 23 yes and then the bottom equation um, the twos will cancel here uh, leaving you with a minus 7 so is it true that 5 minus 7 is negative 2 yes um, uh, there's the correct answer there Okay, here's another example. Um, I'm going to use the substitution method. Now I've already got the top equation solved for y, so I let me just can you know plug that now into the uh, bottom equation, um, and I can get x first. Uh, so if I do that, 12x minus 12x minus 33 equals 33 is what I get here after you distribute the negative 3. 12x minus 12x, those are gone. And now we're looking at negative 33 equals positive 33. <coughs> uh, of course, that's not true. Negative 33 is not the same as positive 33. But since x was eliminated from solving uh, and you had something that was not true, there's going to be no solutions to this equation and therefore no solutions to the system. Okay, and. Uh, uh, we call that an inconsistent system. In general, whenever you um, you know get a false statement here after the variable is eliminated, it's going to be an inconsistent system. Okay, here's uh, one more example of uh, the substitution method. So, um, solve the system. Let's uh, let's solve the top equation for x and then we can plug that into the bottom equation uh, where we see x there. So um, okay, if I uh, subtract 2y from both sides and uh, I'm looking at x equal negative 2y plus 4 okay put that into the um, bottom equation there where we see x and uh, so I've done that. Okay, distribute the negative 3, and I'm looking at 6y minus 12 minus 6y equals negative 12. Well, 6y minus 6y is 0, and that leaves me with negative 12 equal negative 12, which is not news to me. I already know that negative 12 equal negative 12. Um, but this is true, though, right? Negative 12 equal negative 12. Unlike the last example where we had something that was false, that you know we were saying negative 33 equal positive 33, that's false. Uh, because this statement is true and x was eliminated, um, it's not going to matter what x is. Uh, any real number is going to make this a true statement if you're always going to get negative 12 equal negative 12. 
So this system would be dependent. There's going to be infinitely many solutions to the system. And uh, when I give my answer now, uh, again, I want to write that as an ordered pair x, y, where everything is in terms of x or everything is in terms of y. Uh, well, I, I solved the top equation for x. Okay, if I were to solve the top equation for y, uh, subtract x and then divide by 2, I, I did that here, then y would be negative 1 half x plus 2, and I could write that expression then in the y coordinate. That way everything is in terms of x. So what we're saying then is, like this is one way to describe to somebody that there's going to be infinitely many solutions. You can give me any number for x that you want, and I'll always be able to find a y value by taking negative 1 half times that number and then adding 2. Uh, there's infinitely many numbers that you can give me for x, so I'll be able to generate infinitely many points that would be um, uh, solutions to the system. And of course, a dependent system means that you've uh, drawn the same line twice. Okay, there's going to be infinitely many intersection points if you uh, uh, were to use the graphing method. Now, of course, uh, I had solved this top equation for x, so like if I wanted to, I could have write, written this point all in terms of y. You know, my answer then would have been negative 2y plus 4 comma y. That would have also been an acceptable answer. Okay, just as long as everything is in terms of x or everything is in terms of y, um, but, you know, both would be correct there. Okay.